So in this video, we'll be showing you the Tiggo 8 Pro AWD. We'll have a walk around outside the car. We'll see some new things on the inside and we get to test drive it as well. Hi guys, my name is Don and I'm not a pro driver. So we're here at Cherry Commonwealth and I really want to thank Miss Christine C and Sir Andrew for showing me additional toys that you have on top of the 1.6 because this is the Tiggo 8 Pro 2 liter AWD. So this is the key that we have. So I would open the tailgate, it opens, and then if you want to close it, you would press the button, press and hold. And then if I would want to unlock it, I just press, and then you would see this. This is a new one, <laughs> right? That's nice. That's really nice. This is on top of the Tigo that you would see inside here. We're getting ahead of ourselves to lock it, sorry. You would lock. When it's locked, press and hold. It will start. It should. There we go. So that's the other function of the uh, lock button, but you could also do the same thing in starting with this fourth button right here, right? Looks like a refresh icon here. There we go. All right. So those are the key button functions. So we still have the proximity effect that you have on the 1.6 wherein you come close to it. It will sense that you have your key fob around you. Okay, there are two ways of locking this. One is just walking away. It will lock, right? And then to unlock, so here it will unlock. To lock it again, you can press this. It has like a fingerprint, but it's not fingerprint. It looks like it, but it's not. You just tap on it. There we go, right? So that's this one. When you're near the car or near the door, put your fingers here and then it unlocks itself, right? Well, you still have the front big grill right here. It's really iconic, isn't it? But the difference is from the uh, 1.6 is that you now have this sort of, it's like a plate. It's a different material though. It has a more sporty look to it. It's surrounding the whole grill. It's like protecting the grill in some way. That's how I'm looking at this. On both ends, you have these. Now these are actual lights, unlike on the 1.6. It's similar to this, but it's just chrome. Yeah, these are real vents. So those are on both sides, you have them. By the way, the headlights got an upgrade. They're now adaptive. This light right here, this bulb, that, that lamp right there, the one with the LED pure vision thing. Yeah, that moves. That's cool. All right, over to the side, the, the rims, they're not really different from the 1.6. However, the, these are Cooper tires and it says here it's a 235-55R18. And they're in this brakes, same here, this brakes. All right, so here at the back, this is where you know that this is the AWD. You have this bench, AWD, and you have 390T. Oh yeah, and the other thing, you can't miss this, the taillights. They are now clear instead of the red ones that you see. I like this. <laughs> I really, <laughs> this is nice. This is, yeah, that's something. I, I don't know if they can sell this, that we can install it on the 1.6. I don't know. All right, so here, the other thing that's changed as well is the, the uh, exhaust pipes. They're twin. Not quad because you have two on each side. So here and then there. And they are not for aesthetics. They're actually functional. Unlike on the 1.6 though, you know how it wraps around the whole exhaust tip. Here it just cuts off because the tips are so big. So another thing that's different or is an upgrade here is it comes with tint by default from the second row all the way to the back. So this does not have tint and then this does. So it's like a privacy type of thing. So you can see here, if I open the um, window, the color, the tint is actually part of the glass. So here we have the two liter engine, which has the 254 horsepower and 390 Newton meters of torque. There's a lot more plastic going on here and it's cleaner, to be honest. It, it looks nice. You can still access your fluids right there. 
for the oil you would have here. So everything's still serviceable while looking great. Oh, by the way, the transmission is a seven speed dual clutch transmission. Now, when we open the tailgate, when you come to the trunk here, we have this. This is just a board and this houses the luggage curtain that you put on top, right? And then we have the tool section right here. On the 1.6D variant, you have two divisions. One is for just the tools and then the other section is for whatever you want to have. Now it's divided into three. The tools are positioned in the middle. You have pockets or storage on both ends. Uh, this is where you get to access your spare tire as well. The spare tire, it's under here. So the spare tire is just the donut tire. It's just a temporary tire that is used to just get you to the nearest vulcanizing shop. You could have the maximum speed of 80 kilometers per hour and it can travel at a distance of 80 kilometers. When you fold the third seats down, you'll have more storage, which is usually enough for groceries and whatnot. When you fold the second row seats down, you'll have even more space for stuff. It's advertised to have 1,179 to 2,101 liters. Now that's a lot. This is my favorite feature, the power tailgate. There are four ways of opening it, right? I showed you the first one earlier, and then I just opened this one using this button right here. That's the way you open it. And then there's another button right here on the uh, driver's side. So if I press this right now, press and hold, you would see an indicator that it is closing. The other way is the proximity effect. Walk near it, right? It will sense you. You would know that signal lights are blinking. You step away and then it should open, right? So those are four ways. Other than that, just a safety feature. So there we go. So it, it doesn't really close and kill me. Or <laughs> It's smart enough to know that there is resistance and it will stop and just move back. Yeah, this is not the brown leather stuff that I love, but it's still the same material. It's still the same quality. And it's a bit more professional looking. To be honest, that's my take on it. So here, since the, the seats are electronic, these are the controls for it. So you could adjust this moving forward, and then moving backward. And then for the backrest, you would adjust, move it like so here at the top, all right? At the top and then you pull it. Yep, that's it. On the driver's side, you have additional controls from that of the passenger side. So here you have the same ones, right? You can move nearer, farther and then recline for the uh, backrest. And then you can raise the seat up, right? Seat up, that's one. And then here for the lumbar support, this is the uh, control for it. All right, so for the adjustments, you can, th th there is this lock right here. So there are four levels of lock, right? So we have one, two, that's two, three, and then four, right? And then you can adjust that. So that's for the driver's seat the passenger seat, as well as for the second row seats right here. So here we have a smaller version of the um, butterfly headrests on both sides, but on the middle, you don't have that, right? So here you just have one level of adjustment. There we go. This is the adjustment that I like. Yeah, that's it. All right. So for the third row, I'll be going inside. Going to the third row is not on that side, but here behind the passenger seat. There's a lever right here that you would pull. And then once that's in this position, you just have to push it to get inside, all right? So here we go. If I move this here, okay. So let's be a bit realistic here. Okay. All right, so I just move the seat. So usually the second row passengers will be sitting with that configuration. For the third row for long drives, maybe it's best for kids. Yeah, not really tall people. But uh, for short drives, yeah, I could be here if I am alone. I need space to move my legs. That's it. Other than that, we have two cup holders and an aircon vent here to turn on, right? Here, you just have the vent, but no controls. And then here we have like slide effect here. So it's not really, you know, the square thing that we were used to on the 1.6. So on the second row, we would have on doors, you would have cup holders and a pocket right here. The material is mostly leather. Okay, here is plastic. Leather, leather. Yeah, everything is almost leather, except for these. 
they're plastic. Then we have airbags, right? Here you would find icons or badges of ISO fix, right? What you find on cars usually are just tags, right? That's stitched in. But this is really, it's there. Just to notify the user that, yeah, you know, you can add a, a car seat for a kid or a child. Okay, so pockets, pockets, one USB port right here. So here on the second row, we have air con vents, and below that, we have the controls for the air con vents or the air conditioning. How cool is that? Okay, so this is something that is not present on the uh, 1.6D variant. So here, when I tap on this, you could see at the front, there is that ion screen, and then here we have the blower. This also controls the blower at the front. So here on the uh, front row, here on the driver's side at least, it's turned off right now. If I press this, easy entry, it's assuming that you are sitting right now. I can't help but notice this beautiful display right here. This is two 12.3 inch screens laminated into one. And my God, it's, I want one of these, all right? We have the air vents. So we have one on each side, right? Here in the middle, I like the design of this because it looks like you have one seamless aircon vent right there. The vents start from here to here. So this is the uh, vent for the driver. This is for the passenger and it stops. From this point to this point, it's just aesthetic. And then from here onwards, we have another one for the passenger. So this whole thing right here is just for a seamless look. Right? On top of the center console, we have buttons. That's awesome. Okay, so we have home, which is the shortcut for this. So if I go tap this one and I tap on home, it takes me to the main screen. Here we have the shortcut for the media. So if I tap home and then media, so it takes me back there. For a phone, so here we need to connect to Bluetooth. And then here is the other button for mobile phone is not connected. So it's QD link volume down, volume up, and then this is the turn off, turn on the infotainment screen. So that's, wow, that, okay, that looks good, right? <laughs> this is the off state of the infotainment system. So here we have the dome lights. So we have a light switch for all, and then we have a dedicated light for just me, and then there's for the passenger, and then there's one toggle for the door. So it opens up when you open up a door, right? And then in the middle, of the dome lights we have the panoramic sunroof there we go so you just pull here is that sunroof or moonroof whatever so here so you can open the glass this. here we have your visor with lights right here at the middle it's like a notch that houses your sensors and then we have your auto dimming rear view mirror Things. I just want to show you how the glove box works. There is a button here and it opens soft, right? So I like this because you don't have to pull something here. That's nice, right? So I can reach it from here. It's awesome. At the bottom here at the AC control unit, let me turn this on first. There we go. Here we have lane departure warning, then lane keep assist. So these are those buttons right here. Now we have the air conditioning here. These are all touch. When I press on auto here, it tries to calibrate the air or the temperature inside the cabin. It will blow air faster like this one, or it will decrease it. So it's automatic. So here we have the ventilated seats for the driver's side and heating for the driver's side as well, right? And here for the passenger. So that's for the passenger. And then we have the recirculating air right here button or toggle. We have max for the fogger. Yeah, you can feel it here. There are vents there. And then we have the fogger at the back, right? That's for the back. And then here is for ion. I think that means that we're breathing cleaner air. So, oh yeah. <laughs> See, it, it says here you were breathing leaves. Okay, so the air that we're breathing right now is being filtered in some way. So here in the uh, center console, we have the start-stop engine button and it's colored cyan. Unlike on the 1.6D variant, it's white. Still a cyan shade here for the shift knob. 
So here we have your hazard, that's the hazard button. And then we have your handbrake here. Uh, and then this is the auto hold, right? Here is a bit different. So, so in the 1.6D, this is the volume rocker. Here on the um, AWD, Sports mode entered. There we go. So we have eco, normal, sports, snow. Snow mode entered. Mud, and then off-road. Off-road mode entered. There we go. So you can see that this car really is made for off-roading. Economic mode entered. Let's go to eco mode. Is this a button? Ah, oh, no. It's not a button. On the top of this dial right here, of the mode selector, we have the settings button, the vehicle setting. So that's how the vehicle settings looks like. So we have driver assist settings, personalized settings, basic vehicle information, air conditioning settings. Let's uh, move on to, this is the auto off engine button. Right now, I just turned it off. Right, so if I want to enable it, then we leave this just like so. Then we have park assist, and then we have the AVM as well. So the AVM is a bit different. I, I just noticed that we have the buttons here. On the 1.6, we have the buttons in one column, and here we have the buttons at the top that serves as an overlay. The other thing that's different is we have this bird's eye view portion of the screen on the right side whereas on the 1.6d it's on the left side i kind of like this view where the button serves as an overlay now if we move to here we have card holders well you could fit your phone here as well two cup holders i just noticed that the cup holders here you can remove this yeah you can remove this but this is not you can't slide this inside and then your armrest which opens up like so and then we have ports right and then this port is for if you want to connect your phone to carplay or android auto via qd link and then this one is the charger or your usb media drive so here you can see here there is this vent that is the air conditioning to cool what's inside this box and then we have the key here as well for the emergency so this is where you would place your key like so for emergency starting at the bottom of the center console we have your wireless charger here and then here we have space for your wallets and whatnot so there's a shelf here and then here at the front we have your 12 volt socket right so at the top, you have your joystick for your side mirror. So you could control that, right? And then up and down. And then on the right, that goes the same way. That's uh, where you set left or right. That's what the joystick is for. And then here is to collapse the side mirrors. If you're running into tight spaces, the other is windows. So they're all power, all of them. So those are the windows and then your window lock. So it lights up when it's locked. So here we have unlock and lock button. So when it's locked to open it, then you have to pull twice. And then if it's unlocked, it's just once. We have the memory settings. So here we have the M button at the top. So if I tap and hold and then press one, you would see memory settings completed, right? So that means if I move my seat right here and my side mirror, like so, and I press one, it goes to that setting where I just saved it, right? If we go to vehicle settings, let's see here. So personalized settings and then memory seats. So here's memory key binding. Choose seat rear mirror position. Save current seat rear mirror position. Okay, so here is for saving. This is by the way, key bound for here, right? Let's just say I change this. There we go. Can I save this? Okay. So I can save this here, save current seat and rear position. If I tap on this, confirm. All right, so this is now the common. So if I change, here's casual. So this is setting that, right? And this is going to common, confirm. And then this is number one. So it should move forward. There we go. Again, it's similar to the 1.60 variant where we have three profiles for this key and then three on this side and then if you have another key then you have another three so that's a total of nine right okay so here we have the uh stock for the lights right so right now it's off and then i turn it to auto that's how it looks like on the front here is park light and then here is headlight right now it's off right and it's on drl so this is how it looks like when i signal right signaling left and then signaling right 
And then here is how it looks like on park light on signal. So that's signaling left and then signaling right. All right. Now here, if I just turn the fog lamp, I can turn on the fog lamp like so. All right. So right now it's uh, the TRLs are on and fog lamp. I should turn this on before the fog lamps turn on. So that's the fog lamp. And then for the rear fog lamps, we have this. So you can see on the cluster, it has that yellow icon right there. So now at the rear, it's off right now. If I turn it on to auto, right, that's how it looks like. And then I would park light. That's what it looks like on park light and then headlight. Uh, for the rear, okay, so I turn on the front fog lamps first and then turn on the rear headlamps. Ah, rear fog lamps, sorry. All right, so that's the rear fog lamps and you would see that icon again, the yellow one. All right, uh, it's not staying there. It's it's uh, it's going back to the position of where front fog lamps are. So if I turn it off altogether, there we go. All right, so this is again with rear fog lamps. Here's how it looks like when you have signal lights, right? And this this is going left, and then this is going right. All right, so that's all off. There we go. So here we have, on the right side, we have the um, controls for the wipers, right? So here we have mist, off, auto, low, and high. Okay, so this is mist. There we go. So that's mist. And then we have for auto. But no, right now, nothing's happening because it's off. If I put it on auto, right, then we would see the sensitivity of the auto wiper. So right now it's on the lowest and then second so there are four levels of it there is a sensor here so when it detects water then that is you know when it will trigger the wiper on its own so that's cool so we have for the rear so this is the toggle for that you just there we go so that's moving right now on the uh, wiper you may damage it you cannot raise it all the way up you will damage this part of the hood so that's not good the way you would want to raise the wipers is if once I turn this off, right? If I turn it off, you suddenly put it here. You just lift it up. So here right now, you can, when it's in this state, you can raise it and then replace your wipers, service it, clean it, whatever. So this is what you would usually do when you're in car wash, right? Car wash mode. So you can see that these are the adaptive cruise controls, the top and the bottom, and then we have left and right buttons here. So we have here your music and then your settings here. So we have theme, ESP function, fault inquiry. So this is what controls the um, cluster, right? And then we have your volume buttons here. So here we have the voice controls. So this is voice controlled, all right? So yes, I'm here. Open my window. All right, open. I'm listening. Close my window. All right, closed. That's awesome! Yes, I'm here. Deploy airbags. <laughs> Here's the electronic manual. Let's go to voice recognition. And here is a list of commands that you can use. So yeah, that's a lot. Speaking of voice commands, on the infotainment settings here on voice, Earlier, we were trying to figure out when you say hello, Cherry, it will confirm that it's listening to you and then you would follow up with a command, right? Here, it's not doing that because there is this toggle right here. So wake up by voice. If I tap on that and I, then I say, hello, Cherry. I'm listening. There we go. Open the sunroof. Got it. It's opening. There we go. That's awesome. <laughs> so speaking of the infotainment system, you could see that I, I have, this is not CarPlay by the way, and it looks like CarPlay. It's modern and they really thought about this. This is one of those things that I wish they could have done better on the 1.6. They already did. All right, this is it. So let's say here the vehicle settings. So it's not RCW anymore. It's rear collision warning. You see the grouping? You see the grouping of these? They're using the grouping. 
transparent. That's awesome here, right? This is a better UI. This is it. This, yes, <laughs> this is good. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed with this. Uh, for the theme, okay, so here we have the cluster. Let's see the theme. All right, so here's fashion. Here's dreamer. Oh, look, switching theme. Ha! Huh. So here we have theme and then classic, switching theme. All right, so I like this. It looks like the analog gauges that you have, traditional analog gauges, and you know, that skeuomorphism that you're having. And you can see the whole thing. If I raise it here, yeah, I can see the whole thing from here. I like the fact that when I'm changing the theme on the cluster, the infotainment also changes. So they're really acting as one. Unlike on the 1.6, where there's language settings on the cluster and then there's language settings on the infotainment system. Here, it's like they're acting as one unit. See, the UI here is so much better. So if I say Espanol, can this change to Espanol? Oh yeah, it did, right? So that's cool. So if I change this back to English, this should now be in English. That's really cool. Okay, so I, I, I am impressed with this. For the headlight, by the way, you could adjust the headlight level here. We could see the adjustment of the light, right? There we go. So I'll just set it to two. And then daytime running lights, there we go. Headlight delay and then intelligent high beam assist. So all of those are there. Here's one thing that's cool. We have fuel consumption unit and you can choose if it's liters per 100 kilometers, right? Or kilometers per liter. We could have had that on the 1.6D. My goodness, this is awesome. You can see seat belt. So here, if I put on the seat belt for the second row, what happens? All right, so that's green. And then we have another one here for the middle. What happens? Green. And then we have another one here. And they all disappeared. For this first icon to disappear, that means that both the passenger and me, the driver, should have their seat belts on. And then that will just disappear. Right? So right now we're not seeing that anymore. If I release my seat belt, there we go. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the Tigo 8 Pros yet, in addition to the lane keep assist or lane departure warning, we have adaptive cruise control. So this is Hold on. So I just turned it off. So there we go. It says ACC on and then set, okay, unable. And then we have TJA and ICA, which stands for Traffic Jam Assist and Integrated Cruise Assist. Let me try that. Can I activate that here? Set. There we go. So it's on. So active ACC. Please step on the accelerator. All right. And then we have your audio controls which are the volumes, mute, and then we discussed this earlier, the uh, voice key or the voice button. This is for seeking the sounds, and then we have pick up and drop a call. So what's more? If I press on this, then it goes to the radio. So I just inserted the USB here, and it says here, found connection device USB 2. Please choose to play the content. All right, so let's choose music. Ha, huh. here. The sounds are awesome. We have the Sony speakers right now. We also have speakers here at the bottom on the doors as well as on the second row. Okay, so if I go back to play right there and then tap on this, I think this is source. And then here, it's enabled right now. So it's playing, but I just put it on mute. So when I tap on this, then we go to the um, contents of the USB. If I go to video, USB 2, and then we have my review. The, what's the All you can see is a black interior. Right? Okay, so that's um, that's the video. What else do we have here? Picture. Okay, so we have USB 2, and then this is how the picture viewer looks like. If I hit home right now, so we have Apple CarPlay. If your iPhone is connected here on the USB port 1, this will be enabled, but right now it's not. We have QD Link for Android. So we don't have Android Auto yet, but we have QD Link. Hopefully, there might be a software upgrade so that you can have Android Auto here rather than using QD Link. So 
here on this side which is here so it's not really in your face which is nice so let's see if we could make this dance with the music so here if i allow ambient light music rhythm yeah it's changing how cool is that i can't see it there you can barely see it now i think we've had so much fun in here that we need to take it for a test drive see how it feels all right drive there we go okay whoa 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 okay <laughs> Okay, so this definitely has a lot more, hmm, you know, wh wh because I'm not really flooring the gas right now. Okay, so I'm not really sure if even on normal mode, the four wheels are driving. So let me put this in off-road. Let me try, okay? I know this Deep is not off-road. All right, there we go. So if I floor it right now, oh my goodness. Mm. Six. Oh, God! <laughs> okay, so I don't usually drive that fast, all right? <laughs> this is <laughs> I I can only do this in open roads, but I don't usually go from 0 to that speed that fast. It kind of sucks because I cannot demo to you the capability of the off-road, and it doesn't give the car justice when I'm using an off-road car and I'm still on you know here on the pavement right it doesn't uh, it's not fair but here's what I can say though it does have more power than the 1.6 yeah you can feel that you can definitely feel that okay so I'm cruising at 30 40 let's see how it behaves okay so I'm 50 right now you can feel some vibrations that's that's one thing you can hear the two liter engine rev up you know after it gets to around the rpm like 2.1 ish you could hear that you could hear the it's angry right for the ride itself the comfort it's really soft it's softer than what i'm used to in the 1.6 right it's just a shame though that i can't give you an off-road demo the sound is similar to 1.6. It's quiet inside. The ride, I don't know, it's softer here. I don't know what's happening because the quality of the seats are the same. It's a tad comfortable. You can point that out definitely. So let me try here uh, Economic mode in eco mode. So I'm gonna go in circles because yeah, that's all I can do here at this point, going in circles. I really wish we were in, you know, not on a paved road. That would be cool. So this is like your n normal city driving. Let's try reaching 100 on Eco. Okay, so here, I'm gonna step on, you know, the accelerator here. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's, I, I don't wanna go further than that. Okay, that's 80. Okay. Wow. I know this road, I've tested a smaller car with this and you know, it's really bumpy because of the bigger tires, the bigger suspension, it's supporting the car. It's really giving you that comfort and fun. When you're revving from low speeds to high speeds, you can definitely feel it. It's pulling me back. It's not something that you would do on a daily basis, especially if you have passengers at the second row. But if you just want to have fun, you, you can have fun here. It's <laughs> I can't describe to you it's different from the 1.6 you can have fun on the 1.6 but here it's faster to get there <laughs> right this is definitely an upgrade to the 1.6 both on the comfort and the power you can you can definitely feel that yeah <laughs> so now i'm gonna park it from my perspective they placed the bird's eye view here because if it's here, then it will be blocking this steering wheel. That makes sense. So the Tiggo 8 Pro all-wheel drive, 2-liter version, really does deliver that, <clears throat> you know, in power. And the comfort is there as well. Also, on the less technical aspects, like the features, right? The um, infotainment system. You would see that they improved the UI for the settings. They've also added the default voice commands. 
They've added adaptive headlights. They have the fog lamps. But you could see that this was built with intent. And the intention was to go off-roading. That's one of the pluses. So if you're wondering what to get, 1.6 or AWD, think of it this way. If you're driving more often than not on paved roads, you're fine with 1.6. But if more often than not, your daily route involves non-paved roads and you still want comfort, this is the way to go. All right, there is that off-road mode. Definitely that will help on your daily commute, your daily use of this. I'm gonna miss this. <laughs> this car has so much to offer when it comes to driving and safety features. So here's a list of all the features that I think is worth noting. Oh, and this car is under Cherry's Premium Preserve program as well. Thank you so much to Miss Christine C as well as Sir Andrew, who has been kind enough to show me what are the additions on top of the 1.6. And if you're interested in getting one, I'll put the details in the description below where you can find the contact details for Cherry Commonwealth. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hanggang sa ulitin, kita kits.